Okay, quick tutorial this time. Well, I say tutorial, but I don't really understand it too well. So, But I've never really understood the structure spider tool, and I haven't found any tutorials on YouTube. So I played around with it a little bit today, and I felt like sharing what I have learned because it could be useful. Um, specifically, when you're dealing with a shared opcode, like in step nine of the, the tutorial here. So what you'll find is if you find one of the the health addresses, you find what accesses it, and then you find what that instruction accesses, what, oh, I closed that, but it was this one, I believe. So if you come in here and you go find what instructions this accesses, and then you attack, you'll f see that all of them go through the same opcode here. And what this is good for is normally you would come in here, you'd add it to the structure dissect and you'd find a structure and you'd separate these into groups based on whether they're your allies or your enemy right and then you could look in here for something that's different for either group so in this case Dave and Eric are on one team and they have the value 1 here at offset 10 and Hal and Kit have the value 2 and if you have the what's it called Structure dissect filter, yeah. Extension from the CE enhancer thread on the forum. You can come in here and you can right click and you can go filter out different elements. So if you duplicate this, so, and then you'll see that this one's left because it's the only one that's different for both groups. And that's one basic way to look for these different values. But what it won't do is it won't go through these pointers. It'll check the pointers themselves but it won't go inside of the pointers and compare these values. Um, that's where the structure spider comes in handy. You can take the address for one struct and the address for a second, and you can come over here and say the value must be the same or it must be different, and you can say how to compare the, all the values. Um, as far as I know, you can't give it a structure type and say check these things based on how they're defined in here. Um, it's just all or nothing here. But in this case, that's okay because we know what the type is already. And most games will probably be either four bytes or one byte. Um, one thing to keep in mind is if you are doing one byte, the larger your struct size and especially the number of pointers it follows will make it take a very long time if you have high values with one byte because that's a lot of different values to check. Um, four bytes isn't too bad, especially with the low level here. But that's something to keep in mind if you do choose to do one byte value scans. Um, there's also a string scan here, and I'm not really sure how it works. It goes through and finds a bunch of strings, I assume, but I'm not sure how useful that really is. Um, and then you can change the alignment size here. Um, if you change it to one byte up here, you'll probably want to change this to one as well but I'm not entirely sure how that changes most of the time. Um, I imagine four byte alignment size is fine for everything except for one byte. Um, but let me go ahead and show you how this works. Um, let's see, this is B0 and F8, so they should be the same because they're both on the same team. And then it'll just like the pointer scan, it'll ask for a file to save the information in, and then it'll do a scan, and it'll tell you how many it found. And in this case, there's a lot of values that are the same which you would expect. But then just like you, the pointer scan, you come in here, you find a new one, or you make it change, and then you rescan it. And in this case, they should be different. And you do a new scan. And now we're down to 5,090 results. And then you can get a different struct or make it change. And you can rescan and get it down a little bit more. And then you can compare. These are both enemies, so they should be the same value. And we're down to 423. And then you could restart the game and do some more scans. But what this does is it shows, okay, offset 10 is different for both groups. Well, based on these scans we've done. Since we were doing it based on groups, that's how it shows. And then at offset 54 is a pointer. And if you follow that pointer, offset 10 is also different. And in this case, it actually happens to be the same value, I believe. Yeah, CA8, and this is C10. Um, 
offset 54 is actually pointing to the next player in the team. So it just circles back and forth constantly. Dave points to Eric, and Eric points to Dave, and then it keeps going back and forth. So that offset isn't useful in this case. But 58 doesn't do that. 58 is pointing to something else. I have no idea what it's pointing to, but it's extra data. And if you go into offset 58 and then into 108 from that and here, you'll see that there's another value that is different for each group. Dave and Eric have a value of 70 and Hal and Kit have a value of 79. Right? And there's, you can see a bunch of different ones in here. And there it'll follow since this is set to two, it'll go follow two up to two pointers. So it'll follow up to 5810 is another pointer up here. Right here's another pointer right here. Um, this must be the the uh, GUI element type because of label four, eight, ten. These must be the names of the labels for the player for the uh, health. All right, and offset 71C has a different value. Um, I'm wondering if that's the actual health or name value being shown. 71C is right here. Oh, that's a pointer. Okay. What's it pointing to? Uh, it looks like the same thing. Okay. These are zero, and this is pointing to something else. I'm not sure what, but you can tell that they're different. And you could possibly write a script that says, is this a player or is this an enemy based on that? All right. So if you're not having any luck just manually looking in the dice check structure, what you might use is the structure spider tool to look inside of these pointers and find a slightly more advanced, <laughs> harder to find value that you can compare with. Um, uh, one other thing to mention is you can change the value type displayed here because maybe they're floats or maybe they're doubles. Um, do remember that there are two different ones here. One is for how the scans compare them, and one is just how it's displayed right here. Um, also, as far as I can tell, there's only one, you can only do two at a time. You can't add multiple and say all of these must have the same thing or they must all be different or set up right into the groups like you can here. So that is a bit of a limitation, but since it automates finding the differences, that's still pretty helpful. Anyways, see you next time, guys.